All right, so we are starting lesson number one in the new unit. We are going to be combining chapter two and chapter three into one unit, like we did with measurement and trig. We're going to do chapters two and three. It's going to be geometry and reasoning. Reasoning is like logic. Okay, I find the right page, page 63. Reasoning is about logic. They will often just do, here, I'll give you guys an example. Mr. L is a teacher. All teachers go to university. Therefore, Mr. L went to university. That's kind of the stuff you have to do. And it's one, don't, please don't laugh about it. Like, Mr. L is a teacher. All teachers go to university. Therefore, Mr. L went to university. So it's like A equals B. B equals C. Therefore, A equals C. That's the kind of stuff that you're going to see in this section. Okay, so that's reasoning. And then we're going to combine that stuff because there's just not enough of that to give you a test on it. We're going to combine that with some geometry stuff you have to do. It's not beautiful at all. Geometry. Okay? That'll be chapter three in your book. Some I, I find of, of all the chapters, that one is liked the least by students. Chapter three. Anyways, we'll get there when we get there. Hopefully it's okay for you guys and hopefully it works out. You guys don't have protractors. We're just going to measure the, we're going to follow the bullets here and do an investigation and follow this. Uh, the book does a pretty good job of this. So they could have started us with anything, a puzzle, it uh, could have been uh, some algebra, but they're choosing geometry here. So they want you to measure angle ACB. So I'm going to do that now. You guys don't have a protractor, so you can just watch me. So what's the measure of angle ACB? 90, right? You guys okay with that? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to mark another point anywhere on the circle. Call it point D. And then we're going to connect. So you guys can do this. Connect point D to A and to B. And then we're going to take out our protractor and we're going to measure the angle ADB. Yeah, so you've s figured out the investigation. What's the measure of this angle? Also 90, right? So what kind of, what kind of comment could you make about this? What conclusion can you make based on the observations from your work? So I'm going to save you the trouble of doing another three points. What kind of conclusion could you make? But first you have to have, if AB is a diameter, if AB is a diameter, and you connect another segment another segment to the circle the angle made is 90 so what we just did there Hey, well, I'm going to ask you to put that on my desk if you can't put it away in your pocket. What we just did there, that process, like who cares that it's 90 degrees? Who cares that it's a circle? 
the process that they're trying to demonstrate here is you play around, you gather some evidence, you make some observations, and then you draw a conclusion. That's the point of this lesson. That process is called inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is where you make a conclusion about some evidence. Okay? You walk into a murder scene. There's blood splattered on the wall. There's a body. What are you doing as a detective? You're, l you're looking at the clues. You're doing inductive reasoning. You're going to draw some conclusion based on the evidence around you. This is inductive reasoning. Let's try this again. Let's try it with this one. This one's just a pattern. This one's just a pattern. Here's the original. Maybe not call it one. Let's just call it star. Here's the original. How many new trapezoids do you have to add to sketch one? And they put that there for you here. Jump to sketch two. We already have those from before. How many new triangles? Four. Jump to sketch three. How many new trapezoids? We have to finish it, right? So you have to draw these. So finish off that sketch. And how many are we adding? All right, so how many more trapezoids do we have to put on here? How many total? Oh my gosh, look at me go. Two, four, six, eight. All right. Now, without making a sketch, could you predict the next one? Two, four, eight. What's the next one? Sixteen. Good. I bet, I bet. If you didn't if you didn't find 8, you might go like 2 4 6 8 10, right? So you need a you need more evidence to draw a better conclusion. So what's happening? We are doubling. 5 will be 32 and 6 would be 64. How could you get the 10th? Just keep going, right? Now 2 to the 5 is 32, so you could go jump right away. 2 to the 10 is, okay, see how I did that? It's just 2 to some power. What is it, 1,024? Is it? Okay. I have most of those memorized for some reason. Okay, so hopefully you are starting to see what we're doing here. And it's all defined here on the next page. It's defined for you. You could take out your highlighter. And you could highlight. Using experience, observations, or patterns, you make some conclusion. In other words, using evidence, use evidence to determine what's happening. Okay, can we think of some examples of this? Mr. Lineweber always gets penalties at hockey. <laughs> Mr. Lineweber is an angry guy. <laughs> Kalela, do you need to put that on my desk? Mr. Lineweber is really mad in a ball hockey game. What happened? Maybe he got slashed. Okay. 
So hopefully you remember this, because guess what the next lesson is going to be? Deductive reasoning. And deductive reasoning is a little bit different. So you just have to remember the two, inductive versus deductive. Okay? Let's keep going. The conclusion that we make, the conclusion that we make is called the conjecture. Conjecture is a word you're going to have to know for this unit. Okay, the conjecture is just the conclusion or some generalization or some educated guess that you arrived at based on evidence. A student didn't do well on their test. What conclusion could you make? Maybe they didn't do their homework. A student is late every day. What conclusion could you make? You could say they're lazy. But what if they had some family issue that you didn't know about? You're misunderstood. That's what's the problem with conjectures. They're not always true. So based on your evidence, you could come to the wrong conclusion. Is that a fair statement? So a kid comes in late every day. I get mad at them. What's wrong with you? You're always late. You must be lazy. But maybe they have a family problem, right? So I've drawn the wrong conclusion. Yes, sir. Okay. Cotton candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, it's good. That's good. Okay? So that's this part here. Conjectures may or may not be true. Okay? Conjectures may or may not be true. Watch this one. The number three. Is it prime? Yeah, it only divides by one in itself. Number seven, is it prime? Follow with me, guys. Eleven, is it prime? Okay, what's your conclusion about prime numbers? All prime numbers are odd. All prime numbers are odd. Then this smart, cook, this smart cookie rolls in. And he's like, oh yeah? What about number two? What about number two? What do you know about number two? It's even and it's prime. So two here would be called the counter example. It proves the conjecture false that all primes are odd. Okay, let's keep going. Let's move on. Let's actually do some stuff. All right. So the counterexample is an example which shows that a conjecture is false. Katie and Perry were given the following number pattern by their teacher. They're asked to make a conclusion based on the evidence. Hey, Will, put the on my, de on my desk. Do it now. I see you tapping. Put your phone on the desk. Yep, all the way to the front here. Thank you, sir. All right. Make a conjecture, you guys. Make a conjecture. What do you notice about this pattern? What are they doing? They're taking uh, 
2, 4, 6, 10, 10, 20, and 36. What are all those numbers? 2, 4, 6. Well, those are all even. Take an even number and square it, and then add 1, and you always arrive at a prime number. This is the conjecture. You take some evidence. This is evidence. You make a conclusion. That's called the conjecture. This is called a conjecture. When an even number is squared and one is added, the result is a prime number. Okay, Katie's conclusion is a conjecture based on inductive reasoning. Perry investigated Katie's conjecture further by using even numbers not shown. She correctly stated that Katie's conjecture is actually false. Determine a counterexample to show Katie's conjecture is false. Which even did they skip right here? Try that one. 8 squared plus a 1. 65. Is 65 a prime number? Because it could be divided by 5. This is called a counterexample. Okay, let's keep going. I don't like this one. All right. Again, put it away. Let's look at this evidence. What do you notice about the left side of the equation? All the values are? What's the word when they follow each other? Yeah, you could say that by adding one, yeah. But consecutive. The left side of the equation is consecutive. Now, what do you notice about all the numbers on the right side? 33 and 15 are not even. Is there, a, is there something that connects all those numbers on the right? No? I mean, you're summing 3. Beautiful, Norvisi. That's the conjecture. The result is divisible by 3. So when you sum, when you sum three consecutive integers, the result is divisible by three. Now, is that always going to be true? Why don't you test it out? I'll try one. 14 plus 15 plus 16. That's 45. 45 divides by 3. You try one. They have to be consecutive. 97 plus 98 plus 99. Try a few, guys. Try a couple. 20 plus 21 plus 22. See if that works. See if it's divisible by 3. Now, how many numbers are there in the possible universe? Infinity. So could you, 
Could you possibly test all cases? There's an infinite number of possibilities. Could you test each one? So <laughs> I don't think you have the time to test each one. Y you would, your body would eventually degrade. Infinity is not a number. All right, so that's what this is saying. Look at this. We can never be certain that the conjecture is true for every possible case. What you need is a better mathematical argument that would prove that this is always the case. And that's going to be shown in the next lesson. And I'll just show it to you quickly. It's not that hard. If n is a number, what would be a consecutive number? Like if n was 5, what's the consecutive number? 6. So you'd have to add what to n? Okay. And then to get the next one, what would you have to add to n? n plus 2. Novisi, you with me? If n was 5, what would you have here? That's 5, that's 6, and that's? Okay. This is a better opportunity for us to prove mathematically. What's this all simplified? n plus n plus n would be? 3n. Like apple plus apple plus apple, that's 3 apples, right? And then what's 1 plus 2? Now, what could you factor out of that? So, if you times by 3, will it be divisible by 3? That's mathematical proof that this will always work. So, you could do an infinite amount of test cases or one clever little argument like this. That's the difference between inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning. What I got here on the board is deductive. Okay? So that's it for today, for me. If you like, you can start this assignment. If you want to prep for your trig and measurement test, that's cool too. Are you guys okay with that? All right. However, you guys must must keep it quiet in here and you must be working.